this. We'll do it. All right. Hi, everyone. Justin here, and I'm very excited to share a new idea I came up with while being held up at home for the last two months. Anyone who knows me knows I have a passion for everything automotive. And since the coronavirus forced us indoors, I, like many gearheads, have missed the racetrack, the meetups, and the car shows. So I reached out uh, to a friend and fellow car enthusiast, and we created something we're calling Whiskey and Wheels. Or Tequila and Wheels. It's, it is Cinco de Mayo. So this is our coronavirus version of cars and coffee, basically. Each episode, we'll talk about talk with a stuck-at-home car enthusiast about new subject, share updates on one of our garage projects, and all the time it takes to drink a glass of whiskey. So, let's get started. All right. So, what you're drinking a margarita? I've got a little bit yes. of scotch. I both got cars to talk scotch. about. Yes. Well, let's get into our list. Our first subject for the first episode is our top three off-road SUVs. And we batted around a couple ideas offline, and we're discussing this actually a couple of weeks ago on all sorts of different parameters, and if we would share our list, and if we would compile it together, and if they would be cars available in the U.S. market or not. Ultimately, we scrapped all planning and just decided we'd shoot from the hip. I have no idea what's on John's list, and he has no idea what's on mine, so it should be pretty entertaining. Hopefully, there'll be some fireworks, but not too many, and maybe we'll have an agreement or two. I don't know. So, John, how do you want It'll to be, start? I'm interested to see how this goes, seeing as how I'm the only one with an off-road vehicle in my garage. But I guess, I'm sorry, you have a Jeep now. I forgot. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sorry. Well, Jeep's no <laughs> longer off-road. Uh, after John 19... Comes out, John comes out swinging in episode one. With <laughs> after 1990, fire. they're all garbage. Chrysler ruined it. <laughs> well, there, there is Just an kidding. entire episode related to that subject alone. But I do think, you know, I don't know, a Wrangler is off-road, so. It is. I, I it didn't is. make my list, so spoiler alert, you're lucky you dodged a bullet there, so. It didn't make your list? No. Oh, wow. All right, well, I'll go first. My number three on my list, and I, I put these in order of, I, I have a couple different things I use to compile my list, first of all. I thought about what was actually popular for off-roading, uh, both uh, currently and historically. But then I put a filter on there of, okay, well, what do I like and what would I want personally? Like, you know, just over the last de decades, what cars have I lusted over? What have I thought about building? And lately, and I know we've talked about this, is, is uh, really popular, this idea of overlanding and having a trail rig that you can go camping in as well. And I think that was probably inspired more of my list than anything looking back at some of the cars I've lusted over. <laughs> Or life. Uh, so number three on my list is a car that I always thought was really cool and it's always been extremely affordable. I think even when they were new they were probably affordable uh, but I grew up seeing a lot of them. I grew up uh, in Flagstaff, Arizona, lots of mountains, lots of snow, everybody had four-wheel drive and I always thought they were the coolest looking cars when they had a small lift on them and a snorkel and a rack up top and now I'm seeing them built as overland trucks that look very similar but very cool. So that would be like the late 80s, uh, early 90s Isuzu Trooper. <laughs> nice, nice. Very, and the reason I'll, I'll describe it is the reason is it's very big and boxy. It is just one big box. And for some reason, when you lift a big box like that, it just looks really cool. But they're actually really economical too. Like they get great, great gas mileage and they're good four wheel drive vehicles. It, it, that's like one of the best categories of off-road vehicles is just box uh yeah box like, with I, I, I can think of i think you think of tons of models like I, I don't think there's been a manufacturer that hasn't had a big box suv yeah like the 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 jeep uh cherokee chiefs like one of my favorite yes um what else i mean ford with the bronco uh chevy with the trailblazer yeah the old k10s yeah all right, what's number three on your list? All right, so I'm gonna alter it. So okay. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna shift my list around. I'm gonna go with what, what I put for number two, but because you went Azuzu, I have to go with my number two pick, which is the Azuzu Via Cross. Oh, okay, completely <laughs> opposite of boxy. Yes, it is round and weird, and uh, 
what you'll learn about me and cars is the weirder the fucking better. It's so like, true. If no one's I, heard of it, John loves it. <laughs> one, it's cheaper. <laughs> Nobody wants yeah. it. I want it. Pennies what about getting parts? You have to think. You have to consider of the availability of parts, though. Sh- sure. Um, because Zuzu, Zuzu doesn't even sell cars in America yet. Most of my love of cars is all hypothetical. <laughs> the, the likelihood of me owning all these vehicles yeah. is no. is yeah, so we rare. Be anyway, about Lamborghini, Lamborghinis. <laughs> we should be talking about the availability of money, not availability. Of money. Exactly, exactly. So, um, for those of you that don't know the Zuzu Via Cross, I suggest you Google it because it is a very distinct looking SUV, very unique. Um, and if you want some good watching on it, Dirt Every Day on um, Motor Trend on Demand, uh, they did a whole episode of it. They put like 37 inch tires on it and yeah, they took it off roading and it did surprisingly well stock with 37 inch tires. And it maybe they, cool. they, they, I think they maybe put a locker in there, but I'm not sure. But like, yeah. uh, there was a little bit of rubbing. Obviously, they, you have to trim that up more than they did, but it, it performed well and it, I don't know. It's just so weird. I, I like having, I would love to have things that other people don't have. So and it, and like it has everybody and their mom road. has a Wrangler, right? Yeah, no, but I'm saying it has the benefits of what makes the, the Wrangler a good off-road. It's got a short wheelbase. Right. It's up tall. Uh, yeah, they just look fun to drive. Yeah. I, I would Google that everybody. And it, if you remember the old, what was it? The Amigo? Wasn't that made by Zuzu? I'm not sure. Yeah. It looks like a, a futuristic Amico, like they came out to see <laughs> a special version, but it is a really cool SUV. And I, I agree. And you don't see them anymore at all. So, okay. Uh, I went really classic uh, next. This is a SUV number two on my list that it's going to come off as cliche, but not as cliche as my number one. So it's important, it's important to distinguish that. <laughs> Uh, but again, I had to use my filter, which is okay. Well, what have I always thought was really cool? And to me, an introduction into off roading was the Toyota FJ Cruiser. There's a lot of these out in Arizona, and the original two door FJ Cruiser was just the epitome of riding around in the desert in Arizona. Uh, they're just, you know, they were they were cool before it was cool to have a Jeep, really, and they still are. Um, so it's funny that that is that's where we're gonna have our first overlap is number three on my list was just all land cruisers yeah yeah for it's like the longest running nameplate in toyota's and like lineup of vehicles and like globally it's such a success and like to this day even though like in america it's more of a mom kind of a luxury suv globally it is a it's a workhorse and so yeah they actually have really freaking cool features on the new ones that you wouldn't like why like i don't know if you know this but there's like uh one of the models has like a like this infrared camera system in the bumper uh that then know. projects an image up onto your windshield and gives oh, you night oh. vision oh that's so cool yeah it's insane totally worth the eighty thousand dollar price tag exactly but yeah. I, I do love the, the vintage FJs and uh, yeah, just, and even the, the more recent FJs. Toyota, I think Toyota actually has a really good history of four wheel drive vehicles. I, I actually, I, my whole list could have been Toyota. Easily, yeah. I love but the, the four wheel drive. The FJ, I would say, is the pinnacle. It started in a lot of ways. We wouldn't have the this latest generation of FJ cruisers that unfortunately they ended, you know, ten years ago. So surprisingly, like if, if, if you, if you're like, Oh, that's not American. Um, they, the FJs were actually developed by Toyota for the U S army during the Korean war. So it doesn't get any more American. It's pretty American. If you think about it. Yeah. And Uh, if you compare it to the Jeep that was built for the U S army, it's just like, you know, the original Willys that was designed for the army, like the FJ would just smash it. Would it though? Those early models are probably pretty comparable. I think they probably had Toyota develop based on the the Willis spec. Well, they were just like, you're true. closer to Korea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you give us the box. <laughs> I like that. 
but I, I uh, in general, I, another another thing that almost like my list almost was completely like early sixties, fifties off roaders because one of the things that makes a great off roader to me is that it's simple. And yeah. like, that's why I have a, I have a 62, 63, I forget, uh, CJ five, like most dead simple car to work on. Uh, even though it's not running, uh, uh, <laughs> you can still work on it. <laughs> it. It's easy. Like, like there's just not like all this computer crap in the way. And it's like, Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah. If, if you're looking to get into cars, like I was, and like an early Jeep, it's like a great way besides the, the fact that they're probably completely rusted out pieces of shit. Um, right. The best way is to take something apart and they're so easy. You, I mean, if you have, you know, a ratchet set and a screwdriver, you can take apart an early model. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not saying you can put it back together, but you can definitely. <laughs> if you're smart, you put things in bags and you label them. Yeah. That would be smart. <laughs> Awesome. Luckily, I was pretty smart. I was pretty smart. What I didn't do was uh, replace bolts. <laughs> yeah. When you take bolts off of a 60s car that were probably put on in the 60s, just replace them. Because when you start torquing back the clutch, <laughs> you and just hear that. And you're I like, oh. And it's not like you have to go to an auto parts store or order OEM parts. Those bolts can be replaced from a hardware store. You can go to yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Home so. Yeah, I made that mistake. So wait, so. so you just shared, you shared two then, because you're saying that the... Yeah, Land Cruiser was on my list. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to go ahead and go to number one then on my list. And this is a car that I still would drive today and is on my list of cars to, um, to acquire eventually. And that is a classic uh, Land Rover Discovery. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like the go anywhere. The I hear they're a pain in the ass. The I hear they're a pain. I hear they're a pain in the ass. Like, yeah, I've heard that too. To work and, on and yeah. probably parts, uh, but yeah. they look cool as heck. Uh, like the ones with the round headlights up front, just yeah. I would actually say if there was an algorithm to creating the perfect four wheel drive vehicle, it would be like box plus round headlights. Yep, like that's the start of the equation right there. It has to be a big box with round headlights. Yeah, for sure. Which is funny because number three on my list actually doesn't have round headlights. Anyways, but yeah, yeah. I, I think the Land Rover Discovery is just one of those cars that, like every time I picture one, for some reason, like in my mind, if I think about owning one, suddenly I picture myself like in the safari camping, <laughs> like all, <laughs> all this cool accessories. Like even yeah. though I live in the suburbs and have three kids, like yeah, I, I, it just takes me to a completely different place and I, I feel like if I had one, I would be more adventurous almost. Like I just, I just, I'm missing the car. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. So my number one is kind of, I just kind of had to do it. And it's the Jeep CJ and that's any CJ model. Okay. Uh, I have a CJ five, uh, but I, huh? So you're biased, which is okay. Yeah. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, I, I shouldn't be as biased as I am other than I just have it. Like I haven't even driven this car yet. Like it still hasn't run. <laughs> and that's because I was a novice to buying cars and I bought a car that had an engine that was uh, a boat anchor. That's the best way to learn, right? <laughs> best way to learn was take that out. And actually what I learned in the process was that it was the wrong engine for that Jeep. It was a, it was the uh, Willis uh, go devil engine that was in it. Uh, but for that year of CJ5, it should have been the Hurricane. And so I actually ended up finding a few months later a Hurricane engine for sale. Oh, nice. I was like, and I was like, that will just made in right with the transmission. Like, no. Yeah. Trying to fit a, another engine in there. Like, and <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's great. But all CJ models, I really love the early CJ2 and 3. Like, yeah military like flat fender look it's so awesome super simple um, interiors i mean there's like nothing on the dash yeah, yeah. Two uh and that's it yeah one giant speedometer and yeah. that's your only gauge <laughs> this is how fast you're not going <laughs> because this no this no longer works <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't worry about it get but a gps right. app 
because yeah, yeah. that's the only way you'll know. I mean, at least in America, the Jeep, the Wrangler has really defined off-roading and four-wheel drive SUVs in general. I mean, yeah. to this day, full, I, I don't believe Toyota would have brought back the FJ or Ford would not be bringing back the up-and-coming Bronco if it wasn't for the success of the Wrangler. Yeah. People buy these cars in droves. A hundred percent. And, and, and the Jeep just spawned a lot of stuff. So like another one of my favorites, it was hard not to make the list was the um, international scouts. That was my backup. That was, <laughs> that was going to be like my honorable mention is the yeah. international scout. Yeah. I love scouts. Uh, a buddy of mine has a couple of, uh, uh, scout twos i like the earlier small smaller wheelbase ones uh they're 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 just like a jeep they're just like uh, they saw jeep and they're like but Boxy. what if we make it what if we make it look headlights better yeah yeah <laughs> like they're like let's make a car that people would want to be seen in and not just like this farm based tractor thing yeah like i said it has everything my algorithm has so far which is box with round circles up front especially the, the scout twos they're yeah yeah they fit right in with like the cherokee chiefs and stuff like that all right any any other honorable mentions you'd like to to shout out oh 100 <laughs> percent. okay pick pick one more and I'll, I'll while you're thinking i'll go ahead and shout out uh uh oh geez now i actually oh the samurai sorry love the samurai so the Isuzu samurai was like a jeep that's been shrunk it's like a mini Jeep almost, a mini Wrangler. Um, the Honda Beat of SUVs. Yes. <laughs> Still really, and it's a car that as its age has become. I take that I take that statement back because my next vehicle is the Honda Beat of SUVs. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I can't wait to get it. But so I'll, I'll just I'll say this, that it has aged well and become more cool as it's been customized by their owners, I think. Because yeah. a, a stock Samurai looks like a a really weak Jeep Wrangler. Um, yeah. But now that you, you know, almost, I've, I haven't seen a stock one in ages. They're all lifted with 35 and stuff. So those are what look pretty cool. Okay, what's what's your Honda beat of four-wheel drive SUVs? Also a Suzuki. Only manufactured for two years. Oh, man. I just learned about this car while doing research. On my list. All right, what is it? The Suzuki X90. X90? I've, I don't think I've heard of it. You have to Google it right now because once you see the picture of it, you'll just be right. like, "Oh my god!" It is like, it is. It, it's Was it like sold I mean, in America. Doubtful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looks. That's the Geo Tracker. It's. It's sort of like a Geo Tracker. It looks like a little bit of like a lifted Miata. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Geo Tracker meets Miata. Yeah. It's weird. It's funky. I've never heard of it. Wow. It makes it perfect for me. And it even has a 1.6 liter, which is what was in the Miata at the time. So, yeah. That's yeah. kind of, uh, it looks like Suzuki was kind of early to the game of like hey people don't want cars they want suvs let's just take a car and make it an suv yeah it's essentially that's a like. compact car all right so that's uh, everybody else that's something else for you to google the isuzu x90 <laughs> no the suzuki x90 what i call it. isuzu isuzu x90 it's no, suzuki suzuki, suzuki. Sorry. yeah i'm getting them confused suzuki x90 yeah, so, I'm wondering if Geo or if GM brought that in as a tracker and changed some badging or something. Yeah, it had the, I, I don't see anything like that on the, the Wikipedia. I, it was sold in Australia. There were some imported to Europe, um, but probably primarily yeah. like Japan. So the only, only other honorable mention that I have is, de and I've already mentioned it, but uh, Definitely the Azuzu Amigo was one of those cars that I always thought was just really cool. It was at the time bigger than a Wrangler, but the yeah. back still came off like a Wrangler. Uh, and it just always looked really cool to me. The only other car I'll mention is the, and I, you and I have talked about this at length, and I think it'll make a great Overlander, which is the first gen Toyota Sequoia. Yes. 
yeah. First gen Sequoias are just awesome. I think I had one, I didn't have a four wheel drive one, but I loved that thing that the V8 in it was just great. And I don't know if it was just because I've never owned anything with a V8 before, but I was just like, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> but it, it's a great engine, but unlike other V8s, like it's extremely reliable. It's like Jeep right. inline six, like it's bulletproof, 225,000 miles on that. And you're like, yeah, okay. As long as it's not leaking a lot of oil. Yeah. It. And they do yeah. just look awesome with like the roof tent and a small lift on it. Like they just look really cool. Plus, and there's some great aftermarket bumpers that, that really yeah. make it look badass. Yeah, yeah. Somehow they look not as cheesy as like the lifted Suburbans or something. I don't know. Like yeah, the, some of the like, Suburbans. They're not trying as hard to look yeah. cool. I, I don't, and I don't know this for a fact, but I think the, the Sequoias are just a little bit shorter. Like Probably. to me, when I envision a, a Suburban, it's just like so freaking long. That yeah. departure angle on a Suburban has got to be terrible. It looks cool, but you're not going anywhere. No, no. It'll, uh, it'll get you across a plane to overland into a field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's close out. I want to ask you, let's, let's hold each other accountable. What is your one thing you're trying to get done to your CJ? What's, what projects are you currently working on? Tell us about it. Because you've already you've already told us a little bit, but what's the actual next step that you're going to take? Uh, I got to get the I got a new uh, carburetor. I got to get on there. Uh, the um, the intake studs are too long, so I got to cut those down because I can't seem to find any information about shorter studs. So I'm just going to cut it and hope for the best. <laughs> Said like a, spoken like a true gearhead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it on there and see if it works. <laughs> Cross my fingers. M measure once, cut, then complain about it. Yeah, <laughs> there's a forum for it, so don't wait to find it. That's the thing I can't find. It. Like, I don't think a lot of people really went with this. Like, uh, it's a two barrel carb, which aren't commonly used on this engine, yeah. uh, but it does offer some benefits. So I wanted to try it. So hopefully, I can get it on there, and then hopefully get it started. It's close to running. We we got it backfiring, so that means it's close, right? <laughs> it's it's fuel is being combusted in the cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> At least one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the start. That's the start. What about um, you? What are you working on? What's your next? Uh, yeah, project? so I, I think I told you earlier this week. I decided to. So the Mustang has door panels and a dash, but nothing else. The seats. Um, but there's no carpet, headliner, trunk, rear quarter panels on the inside. There's no interior, basically. So I found on eBay a used center console uh, and ordered that along with some of the trim pieces around the dash and a new carpet pad. So um, it'll make the car a little bit more comfortable to drive and uh, uh, <clears throat> add a little some some comfort creatures like having an armrest, which it doesn't have right yeah. now. So, uh, so that, that, those parts. You need that for good. Houston traffic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. Especially with no AC. Uh, and then, so after that, uh, the next step is. Are you going to add the AC back in? I have the AC. That's what I just glanced over. It's like, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> summer. <laughs> How you doing? No, I, I, you know, it's a car that you drive the window, you work with the windows down anyways. So, yeah. It's just going to stay that way. But the next step is there's no hood on the car. I've got two hoods. Um, and like any true gearhead, that's not enough. So I'm thinking about getting a third <laughs> uh, and having it. So I've got the OEM hood. And I think I told you, I, I took, so I've got hood pins. And I was going to drill for the hood pins in the OEM hood. But I don't have yep. the right drill bit. So now I just have no hood. So we'll, we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> guys thanks so much for watching this has been the first episode of whiskey and wheels uh if you have a subject you'd like to discuss uh leave it in the comments john any, any last any last word uh no i'm this was fun i'm ready to do it again we'll have some guests on upcoming episodes also so remember life's too short to drive a boring car adios or just own only one amen to that <laughs> here's that Cheers. <laughs>
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching uh, Whiskey and Wheels. We hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any suggestions on future episodes, be sure to drop them in the comments. And also be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.